In this video, I'll explain why a weak big toe will contribute to your flat feet. The reason why most of us have flat feet is because of a lack of proper development. We have been wealthy enough uh, to receive shoes like these at a very early age, and that has formed uh, how we walk. As you can see, this is a conventional running shoe, and this is a barefoot or minimalist shoe. If you can see that there is a big upsweep or upturn at the front of the foot along with thick foam padding while this basically has a very minimal uh, almost paper thin sole and very little upturn at the forefoot. Now the reason why they designed this shoe this way was in order to facilitate heel strike and then like a rocking chair lift off. Now this is an unnatural gait and these shoes had to be designed or sold with the idea that you would heel strike. Otherwise you would never do this in daily life if you were barefoot or grew up never having shoes, you would never heel strike to run or to walk. So the idea that you're going like this, like a rocking chair, does not activate your big toe. So the hallucis longus, or any of the hallucis muscles, have no chance to interact with the pavement or with the action because they never get a chance to. This does all the work for them and therefore it inhibits the development of strength or proprioception for your large toe. So because of that, now if you no longer have to activate this, if you no longer have to press off, now this part no longer needs to work. So the idea that you have this, a thick foam heel striking, you already have an orthotic piece creating your instep artificially and then now at the forefoot you then roll out as if you were a rocking chair a living walking rocking chair these shoes the only feeling that you get is striking the heel everything else is done for you this rocking motion of heel roll off involves no other part of your foot other than striking down on your heel which will maladjust your feet and will make your toes, your instep weak and non-existent. So this is the number one reason, I believe, for most flat feet. You will step in the way nature designed. You will go right here on your MTP and you will roll forward. You will push off with your big toe. That's the missing key. When is the last time you've pushed off with your big toe? This shoe will inhibit that. There's no way for you to flex the shoe in order for your big toe to reach the ground. The only way your big toe can come in contact with the ground is by rolling it forward. You can't flex this. Look at, look at me trying to flex this. When look at me, look at me flexing this. This is malleable. This is not, this is a cast, this is a shoe. Now, what you'll see with this shoe is that not only are you not to heel strike by them not giving you enough padding for you to depend on just plopping your heel down, but then also there is barely any upturn. In fact, once I put my foot into it, there is no upturn at all. It just lays flat, allowing this, the MTP, to engage and for me to lift off using my big toe. With that activity, I then also develop this instep through that change of gait into a natural form.
You see the difference? The idea that I can step, step, with true motion. In these shoes, I would never be able to counteract. Look how, look how stiff this is. I would never be able to counteract that with my toe. Heel, big toe. Whatever you're doing, whether it's a squat, you want to use these points, not this point, and not to be overly supinated where you're just rolling on a ridge, not on this ridge solely, but that you're balanced between this point, this point, this point, and this point. These four points are key to foot stability. And if your feet are functioning properly, you will feel them in all activity involving your feet. You'll be taking a band like this. You'll be hooking it around your large toe on the elevated structure. And then with your, just until the ball of your feet is off of the platform, just until the ball of your feet are on the platform, you will then press down with your big toe. Just your big toe and nothing else. I would do 20 reps, I would do four sets, and I would do it every other day. And I would increase the reps every exercise. So if you're doing it every other day, on a Monday you would do 20, on Wednesday you would do 24 to 25, and increase it by five every time, allowing the toe or the hallucis muscle to adapt, and therefore get stronger. Now, if you do these exercises and then you put your foot back in this cast, you will lose whatever gains you had made. These have to be thrown out. Uh, I suggest many, there are many minimal shoe companies. Give whichever one you want to try. Try them all out, try one out. Don't care, but get rid of these. I've explained to you this beginning tactic on how to reclaim your feet. I hope this works out well for you. If you have any questions, let me know. Just send me a comment and I'll gladly answer it. I'm going through the same journey that you are. I never thought I'd fix this. I've just fixed this within a few months and I'd like to share with everybody what I found so far. So subscribe if you'd like to see any more. I'll be talking about other aspects of fitness, but mainly we're gonna get this flat feet problem fixed.